non rock a boatus must stop. I don't want to rock the boat. I want to sink it. Are you going to bark all day, little doggy, or are you going to bite? Brett, delusional. The, yeah, I love you, Jeff. Delusional. Yeah, delusional is okay in your worldview. I'm an animal. You don't chastise chickens for being delusional. You don't chastise pigs for being delusional. So you calling me delusional using your worldview is perfectly okay. It doesn't really hurt. <laughs> she hung up on me. Yes! Yes! Oh my God. What? What? Desperate times call for faithful men and not for careful men. The careful men come later and write the biographies of the faithful men, lauding them for their courage. Go into all the world and make disciples. Not go into the world and make buddies. Not to make brosives. Right. Don't go in the world and make homies. Right. Disciples. Well, I, yeah. got, I got a bit of a jiggle neck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, Pastor. No. When we have the real message of truth, we cannot let somebody say they're speaking truth when yeah. they're not. Take an amazing journey. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. <clears throat> when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. And that is from 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Sorry, I forgot my keyboard died, so I'm going to do it manually. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Apologia Radio. Uh, very excited for today's show. Um, I've been getting to know this guest here for about a year or so. I'll talk about that in a second, but... Um, Pastor Jeff is obviously not in here today. He's actually on his way back from Missouri for a uh, rally we had for our bill yesterday, and uh, it looked like it went really well. He said it was one of the best rallies we've ever had since we've been doing this. So yeah, that's awesome. I'm excited to see how God works through that. But I do have uh, on my right here Pastor Zach Morgan. Howdy! You might recognize from such shows as Provoked. Such shows. Provoked, cool, it's huh? A good it's a cool one. podcast. It's a good show. Yeah. yeah, we like provoked. Um, you guys can check them out at apologiastudios dot com. We just got new shirts up for you guys. We did because of you. Oh, thanks. That's buddy. true. Uh, I like them because I designed them, <laughs> but they are cool. Uh, what's up, director of communications? What's up? I just you know after that scripture reading at the beginning, I'm feeling a little bit undaunted today. Oh. Ooh. Well done. Double entendre. Transition, transition. Well done. Um, hold on. Just hold on, Undaunted Life over there. I, 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 that hold was that not, quite, not quite I ready to bring it. Just the pin on that grenade, okay. but hold on to it. Um, so quickly, I know uh, that said guest only has a, a short time with us, so I'm going to just do some of our sponsorships real quickly. As always, we want to thank Ion Layer. Um, they've been amazing. You started your NAD patches, correct? Yeah. How's that been going for you? It's cool. I can see through walls. It's no. amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's Are amazing. you shooting lasers through? Yeah, that? just lasers. Like, yeah. That's you can push and... golf carts like nobody's yeah. business. Yeah. Right? Full of kids. Yeah. So just pick it up and carry it. True. That's amazing. <laughs> well, uh, you can go to Ion Layer and uh, IonLayer.com and put in Apologia in the coupon code and get, uh, I believe it's your first month free or I always forget what it is. That's a horrible advertisement. Forgive me. Um, just go in there and you'll get a discount. Put apologia. Um, no, it's not a first month free. That's our that's heritage defense. I'll get to them later. Um, but uh, they've been great. They're awesome. They've been just super great to work with, and um, we've all been experiencing the benefits of of the NAD. Um, and then uh, I already mentioned apologies. Shop that studios dot com. You can also speaking of biblical masculinity, uh, start your day off right with some precip coffee, some, some black coffee to start some your day black off. Coffee. There you go. And then, uh, of course, we have uh, Amtec Blades, which uh, our special guest today has had Bill Rapier on his show before and knows him as well. Um, I told him I would show him this battle axe. I've been showing this off every week. Um, he was hoping that it was for him, but can you see Still this? Still can be. Yeah. <laughs> I got to be careful. I already, like yeah, He literally he that, gave though. it to us, and I cut myself on it immediately. It is so sharp. Yeah, we already <laughs> talked about this. Uh, but Pastor Zach shaved his arm with it. Um, it was disgusting. Yeah, it's insane. Um, but look at this thing, bro. This thing is incredible. Um, you can go to... Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to... Hold on a second. You're going to break my something? my letter opener here. Oh, I got okay. to open my mail. So I was going to... 
Wow, that's the best. See if I can do that without right cutting myself, which is so far is not going very well. So I'm just gonna stop. Yeah, that's not going. We'll stop. <laughs> it's really sharp. You can cut paper with this thing. That's the point I'm trying to make. Um, go to AmtacBlades.com, and he's got some amazing knives. This battle axe is literally killer, and uh, you can put apology in the coupon code, get five percent off your order, and he also gives donates five percent to an abortion now as well. So you can buy a blade to save your life and help save babies so um with that i'll go ahead and bring our guests in let's do it kyle thompson what's up bro oh man things are going well here in america everything's fine <laughs> everybody's doing exactly what they need to be doing so i'm not sure exactly what we're going to be talking about today <laughs> no, we're all fine that's here it. That's now sh- that's it <laughs> how <Sorry>. are you <laughs> um what who are you and what do you do could you be more specific? Because I could just take the rest of our time here today. <laughs> Talk about an undaunted life. Yeah, so Undaunted Life is a, I guess you call it a men's ministry. I started back in 2016. I became a Christian as a teenager. Uh, Hellfire and Brimstone guest preacher came in on a Sunday night and did a presentation about the increase of earthquakes and volcanoes. Hell sounded terrible. And so I turned to Christ or Christ snatched me up, whichever your preferred theological language is. And, you know, I kind of realized at that age, I was like, oh, okay, so I'm, I'm starting to get it. I'm learning what it means to be a man. I'm also learning what it means to be a Christian. Those are just different groups, right? So all the manly men are out of the church doing, you know, man stuff, and all the godly men are inside the church, like praying for you and holding your hand and, and doing those types of things. And I carried that dichotomy into my twenties when I realized when I started really digging into the gospels specifically for myself, I was like, Man, this this Jesus guy described in the gospels seems to be a whole lot rougher than the way the, you know, small town Southern Baptist preacher was kind of making him seem. And I'm like, man, I'm wondering if there are rough dudes, you know, guys that are, you know, military or fighters or construction workers or or guys that just kind of don't fit that kind of typical church guy, you know, polo shirt and khakis mold. And then it's like, okay, are they going to miss out on who Jesus is because they walk into his church and see his followers and say, well, I don't want to be squishy like these guys. And so uh, that's when I decided to, to kind of do something about it. I kind of done some things and helped start some other men's ministries. But uh, we started Undaunted Life in 2016 with a, a devotional that was on the Version Bible app, launched a podcast in 2017, and we're here to equip men to push back darkness. And so mm-hmm. we, we do that by providing content that helps forge spiritual, mental, and physical resilience. And so that's everything from our podcasts the, that are solo, uh, guests. I have something <laughs> called The Forging Table. That's where me and three other guys uh, chop it up about uh, individual books of the Bible, and we're going one chapter at a time, one hour at a time. And then just kind of everything extrapolates out from there, live speaking, a lot of stuff coming down the pike for 2024. But that's probably a decent 30,000-foot uh, overview. Sweet man. Um, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I've uh, gotten to enjoy listening to uh, Adopted Life and get to know you, and you've been a good text friend. So I appreciate that. I think we've it's about a year ago. I think I reached out to you. It's funny because we had uh, Eddie Penny on, and um, I think it was right before, maybe right before we had him on when I heard his Sean Ryan episode, mm-hmm. and uh, he, you know, he talks about this weirdo dude that like came and and asked to pray for him at this men's event. And like, that was what kind of led him to Christ. And like, I was like, Oh, that's a crazy story. And then I don't remember if it was before or after that, he, you had him on at some point. And then I was like, Oh, you're the <laughs> Kyle's the weirdo. I'm the weirdo. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Oh man, that's crazy. So anyways, long story short, I, so at some point around then I reached out to you and we, we've talked a little bit and I know we've been planning some stuff for a while, but, uh, um, so yeah, it's just cool. Like I love your show and I love the, you know, the aspect of, just really pushing Christian men to be better men. And we've had a lot of the same guests on, which has been kind of interesting. And by the way, I think I told you, you just had Doug on it. Doug's Doug Wilson's a good friend of ours. And that was an excellent, excellent episode. And then, um, a bunch of our security team was put, it was just the other day, maybe a couple weeks ago was sharing around your episode. They when you were on Mike Glover. We're, we're fans of Mike Glover and, um, field crafts. Did you wear it? He is. He's wearing his field craft hat. Mm-hmm. Look at this guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh anyways i'm gonna stop rambling but um is there anything else you wanna you wanna do to plug yourself there before we get into it no i mean websites undaunted.life uh the show's undaunted life a man's podcast on all platforms we're easy to find dude you just you're like number two on the on christian podcast right 
Yeah, so uh, after the Glover interview, we got all the way to the number 143 spot on the entire Spotify platform. Wow. And so as of over a year ago, there were five and a half million shows on Spotify. And so I don't know how many there are now, but I'm sure it's more than that. And we, we went all the way to number two in the category, 143 overall. And it was just kind of one of those things like the, the interview with Mike was was great. But it was it's the same stuff I've been saying right. the entire time. Right. You know what I mean? Like I, I I didn't change my cadence. I didn't change the way that I deliver it. Uh, I didn't even know the the interview began when it began because we just sat down at the table and he's like, "Hey man, how was your flight?" And then his next question sounded like an interview question. I was like, "Oh shoot, I guess we're going. Like let's let's hit it." And so it was just one of those deals to where it's like. So many people were like, wait, where have you been? How have you been around for, for this length of time? And, and part of it's sad because it's the stuff I'm saying. Yeah, it certainly needs to be said, but it's like, it's not super unique. Like, I don't feel like I'm making most of the things up that I'm saying. Like, I'm yeah. patching, packaging it a little bit differently. Like, my personality is kind of unique. And so I, I kind of like flame in different areas that most people are afraid to. But yeah, it was just, it was a great conversation. And that really gave us a ridiculous amount of momentum coming into 2024. Yeah, that's amazing, bro. Um, yeah, I mean, even Glover, I mean, he's, you know, I know he claims to be a Christian, but he's not like doing his show from like a Christian worldview necessarily. Um, and, you know, he's got a ton of followers just for survival stuff and, and, you know, gun training and all, you know, all manner of things that are just kind of outdoorsy and like, he's yeah. got a ton of followers, you know? And then, yeah, it was cool that you, he had you on and you were just like, dropping gospel bombs like crazy and i was like man this is amazing so i think that obviously i think that's why that was super good for you guys just um you know a lot of guys that wouldn't, wouldn't normally hear uh about christ and the gospel all of a sudden are so uh well, and mike mike even said after the show after the interview he goes man i'm, I'm so glad we had you on because i didn't know what we were going to talk about because anytime i do an interview like this or like with mike or something like that i don't want to know what you're going to talk to me about i don't want to know what you're going to ask me i just want to kind of flow with it now if you're going to ask me like you know how to solve like a calculus problem like yeah i had at least like 30 minutes heads up but like aside from that it's like i just want to kind of flow with it but mike was just like yeah i don't really get to talk about this stuff very often i really appreciate it and about uh three weeks before my interview with him came out his interview with jocko willing came out and that interview went viral hmm. for i forget what jocko said he said like yeah if, if things break down or ai starts to take over he's gonna become like full warlord and that like clip went super viral well, almost like within a month, uh, the interview that I did with Mike was uh, above the interview that he did with Jocko in terms of like listens, downloads, uh, you know, you know, views on YouTube and those types of things. And so it was like it really struck a chord. And, and again, it was just kind of surprising to me because I didn't say anything that I had never said before. Yeah. But I mean, you know, TikTok clips were made and, and Instagram clips and just millions and tens of millions of, of views on all these different things. And so it's like, I, I think it's a positive thing, not necessarily as a reflection of me or on Dawn of Life necessarily, but like there are people out there that are thirsty for this. So when I talk to Mike about, you know, uh, getting involved in church or doing those types of things, like being a part of a, a local ecclesia, a body of believers, he's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I kind of just want to do my own thing and mm. I kind of want to, you know, do like a cowboy church type of deal. But there are a lot of guys that are wired like Mike, that are wired like me, that just they, they don't see a place for them in the church. But then that has downstream consequences when it comes to catechizing their children yeah. or, you know, discipling the people around them or even just developing as a well-rounded Christian man. And so I, I think a lot of that were kind of offshoots of that conversation. So I, I think it's had some very beneficial things uh, for the kingdom, even just since December when it came out. Amazing. Well, let's let's just start off here. This was <clears throat> one point I wanted to make sure I got. Um, and you brought this up with Doug Wilson um, in the show. You just had him on talking about his um, <clears throat> his book, Future Men, which one of my favorite books. We're actually going through that right now with our biblical manhood um, group every, uh, twice a month. And um, the point you were making was, you know, like how can we expect to our boys to be raised up to be biblical men, right? If the if the dads aren't, <laughs> if the dads are childish and they haven't put away childish ways. Um, and I thought that was an excellent point. Um, and so let's just start off there. I want to hear your, your thoughts on that. Yeah. Overall, I feel like men get a pass in modernity now because societally it's better when men are weak. Cause if men are weak, they're more easily controllable mm. and I, we don't need to go into, you know, a rehashing of 2020 and all the different things that happened, you know, when weak men just stood idly by and let people just ramrod them. But the, the, the difference is, is we, it's kind of like men in modern society, dads, 
they just have this perennial ideal of, hey, do as I say, not as I do. The problem is, is a lot of times they don't even say the right things and they're not doing anything that they should be doing. And so it's one thing if your father got in a car accident and he's a quadriplegic and he's trying to tell you about the importance of, of exercise, something that he physically won't be able to do. Yeah, like that makes sense. But I'm describing like a one one thousandth of one percent of, of people out there. But most men are just completely okay with abdicating their responsibility to everyone else in their life. They will let the school watch their kid, raise their kid. They will let their wife discipline the kid. And they, they're not doing anything to take care of themselves. They're not checking any of the boxes they should be, mainly spiritual, mental, and physical resilience-wise. But then they're expecting their sons to grow up to be well-rounded men. It's like, help me square that circle. You're, you're not showing them how to do it. Like, how many things in your life could you point to and say, yeah, I didn't know how to do that until someone showed me how to do it. Manhood is not really something that you figure out. So we have just this spate of dudes with beards that that drink whiskey and have knives in their pockets and, and you know, they, they wear boots that have mud on it and all these types of things, but they're just fully grown up boys. Hmm. They're, 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 you know, prepubescent emotionally, spiritually, they're like not even existent in terms of their understanding of where they should be and how that they should act in the world and comport themselves in a modern culture. And it, it comes down to, I mean, how many societal problems can go back just to the fatherlessness epidemic, just about right. all of them. And so if men just started doing what they were called to do, what scripture would, you know, basically assign to them as their duty, then, you know, most of the issues that we're dealing with wouldn't be here, but thus is the, you know, the situation that we're in now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to, uh, your episode with Glover on the way over here. I actually started yesterday and I like, um, kind of struck a chord with me cause, um, like you, I didn't grow up around guns and yep. I didn't grow up around a lot of those, um, I guess, masculine practices and stuff. So as we're talking to, to men out there and men are saying, okay, you know, I, you know, I, it's evaluating, saying, okay, I really want to step in or begin to step into biblical manhood. You know, what are, what are the things that we need to start doing? What are the things that we need to stop doing? So just speaking to that guy that's saying, hey, I'm at ground level zero here. How would you encourage him to really step into this? Yeah, so uh, that's a good question because that's a question that I get often. So I'll get guys, a lot of guys, hey, I saw your interview with Glover. This is where I'm at. What do I need to do? And without a whole lot of context, because I'm getting a you know short one paragraph email from these people, I don't know anything about their background. Right. I don't know anything about their faith belief. I don't know what their theo theological stances are on any number of things. But just in general, there are two things that you can do. And, and stop the presses, because this is going to be breaking news. No one's ever said this before. Start reading the Bible for yourself and get involved in a local church. Like, my goodness. Like, those are the types of things that societally and yeah. even within Christendom, we are completely biblically illiterate, completely biblically illiterate. So what was it? The Ligonier uh, thing that came out like a few months ago where it said like 45% of self-prescribed evangelicals don't believe that Jesus was God. And it's just like that Man. that's almost half yeah. of people don't believe right. like core cornerstone Christian doctrine. And so part of it is like start getting into the word, start digging in, and I'll, I'll throw myself under the bus as well. In 2022, because I do a lot of interviews on my show, and if somebody's coming on my show that has a new book out, like I actually read the book. So I'm very different in my approach because I'm actually reading the book that I'm asking the people about. And so uh, I read 54 books for podcast purposes in 2022. Wow. I didn't read that many chapters of the Bible that year. Wow. And like December came and it was Christmas, that weird you know week between Christmas and New Year's. And I was like, wait a minute. Like, I'm like, oh, but I'm reading books by Christian authors and there's scripture in it and, and it's okay yeah. because I got to do this for my job and blah, blah, blah. And I was trying to like make it sound better than it was. But then I just had to kind of flip this to be like, look, I can still do the reading the books for the podcast thing, but we need to power that down and power up the reading of scripture. But then the other side is that you, you have this massive issue of isolated men. And when men are isolated and they decide they don't need to be a part of the local church because they listen to dopes like Lecrae or because they you know, saw someone on TikTok that's like, yeah, Ecclesia doesn't <laughs> actually mean what it means, like, oh, something like that, then what these people are is they are disconnected from the vine. Yeah. And so when something befalls them, like life is life's going to happen to all of us, they don't have brothers. They can't look to their left or right and see anybody that they can depend on. They don't have any 3 a.m. friends. They got a bunch of 6 p.m. friends. They don't have any foxhole buddies. And so that's just like a minor part of it. But also it's what we're called to do. We're called to be, we're called to be part of a local body of believers. And what I tell these guys is because I always talk about man-friendly churches. People are like, oh, okay, well, I live in, you know, armpit Idaho. So where in the world is the man-friendly church around me? I'm like, 
don't focus on that. If I had a full-time staff of a thousand people just trying to check whether or not certain churches in America were man-friendly or not, we still wouldn't be able to keep you know the database up to date. Mm-hmm. But I tell guys, look for churches where the word is being exposited, yep. right? Look for expository preaching. Look to where uh, the scripture is being exegeted, not eisegeted. And if you don't know the difference between those two words, you have a supercomputer in your pocket. Figure it out. <laughs> also, do you hear male voices during worship? Yep. Or is it only these like, you know, te- only like these like radio music songs or it's like Jesus is my boyfriend type thing, you know, where there's 17 people on stage, but only eight of the mics are turned on and they're not singing any of the harmony parts. Like, the, do you hear male voices? Mm-hmm. Do you see males helping out? Do you see dads present? Are the volunteer opportunities meant for women and, and, and children? Like those types of things. And then it's like, look for a place that you can serve, not for a place to serve you primarily. And there, there's a whole lot more there, but I've been talking too long. So let's get no, back after. No, dude, that's, whew, I mean, that's, there's so many good there's points there. There's a lot there. of things to jump on there. Um, well, go ahead. You want to ask him something? I think, Kyle, um, the discussion around masculinity, I know for me, I felt this way for a long time, is there, there's really like two options that our culture presents. It's like, okay, if you want to be masculine, there's Andrew Tate. Um, yeah, or on right. the other side of the ditch is we hate masculinity. So you got to yeah. come in and choose between those two options and figure it out, um, which is a, an impossible choice if, if you're lacking a biblical category here. But I think um, you've taken a step here in simplifying it. Like this is not really a high level understanding here. This is a simple step for Christian men because so much of what you said, I think, hinges on you mentioned manhood can't be figured out. I'd love to hear you flesh that out a little bit more. I think what you mean is the importance of imitation. Um, Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. You're talking about being surrounded in the body of local believers by men. To what end? For what purpose? Well, there's observation going on there as to how men live, what they do, how they serve, uh, how they worship God. Um, All of that has to be imitated, right? Is that... Could you fill that out just a little bit more, the importance of um, imitating the right kind of example of masculinity? Yeah, most men left to their own devices are not going to figure anything out. They're going to settle on something. And so what I mean by that is like maybe they're going to settle on the I'm a man because machismo, because I got big muscles, because, you know, I carry knives, because I can seal carry, because I do jujitsu, because I get in street fights, because I have a beard, because I eat beef jerky, because I kill animals and then hike them out. And then that's, those are the boxes that they check, right? And so they just settle on that. Or you have the other person that has been influenced by first, second, third, and now fourth wave feminism to think that any expression of testosterone-filled masculinity is in and of itself toxic. And so they're doing everything they can to remove toxicity from their lives. Yeah. So they're soft, they're pliable, they go along to get along. They say things like, I want to be known for what I'm for, not what I'm against. Uh, you know, they, 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 these are, it's people like that, and so they go in the opposite direction. And what they don't realize is what they're describing is preferences. They're not describing types. And so what I mean by that Mm. is there are people that do all the things that I happen to like, fighting, beards, jerky, you know, whiskey, cigars, those types of things. Those things make you awesome. They don't make you a man. Okay. And the same thing is true. If a guy likes writing poetry (sighs) and cooking and, you know, serving in the uh, the, the kids ministry or things that might ping a little bit more feminine, Mm. those things don't make him a man either. That that's just kind of his preference. Hmm. And so we, we don't look to the Bible for models for how to be men. And also we don't look to the Holy Spirit through prayer or, or, or fasting or anything to tell us what type of man do you need me to be? Hmm. Because we need some guys like Rapier on the front lines pushing back darkness. And that means putting bullets in the foreheads of terrorists. And then we need other people pushing back darkness by being on the prayer team while a men's conference is going on. They're outside praying to make sure that, you know, spirits aren't getting in there and distracting men while they're going and getting after it yeah and so the thing is is if i listen to an interview with eddie penny and i think oh my calling is to be a member of seal team six probably not and if someone listens to an interview like mine it's like oh my calling is to be a podcaster like kyle so i can say these incendiary things that inspire dudes maybe not for you either and so there's not that one standard for what fits what every man should do but there are those things that every one of us should be seeking after and it's Yes, if you're looking to me, you should be looking to me as I'm looking to Christ, right? right? I should be I should be a reflector to the Father. I shouldn't be the absorbent of your attention, if that makes sense. Oof. That's excellent, that's, bro. That's helpful. There's there's one word I want to get to, and Zach knows what it is, but before I do that, um, I want to hear you talk about um, 
what's wrong with the the church and our culture. And uh, I mean, you told the story with Doug. Um, I think some one of your listeners emailed you that's a worship leader, um, and I want to hear you tell that story and just just go from there because you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so there was uh, basically from the very beginning of my podcast, I promised that I was going to do an episode on contemporary worship music and how it's the worst. Because, you know, the intro outro to my podcast has either been August Burns Red or Holy Name. And so these are very aggressive, uh, aggressive songs. It's very aggressive music. Uh, It's, you know, angry music for happy people. And to me, uh, whenever I became a Christian as a 10th grader, like there, I thought something was broken in me because like I, I just I hated Christian music. I was like this stuff freaking sucks i don't want to listen to it it hurts my ear holes but then i would listen to living sacrifice or zeo or extol or uh striper or any of these types of bands i was like this is different like i feel different when i listen to this and so extrapolate that all the way out there was a worship leader here in my city of oklahoma city and i kind of told him my problems with contemporary christian music which i'll get to and he goes hey man i'm actually very concerned to hear you say that i'm not sure you're saved i was like pardon I don't like the way contemporary Christian music sounds when it hits my ears and you're telling me that I have not put my full faith in Christ for the propitiation of my sins. And he goes, yes. I was like, that's an interesting point of view. I think we need to change the subject. And so the thing is, is a lot of men are there though, guys, Mm -hmm. Luke and Zach's, a lot of men are there. (laughs) They feel like, I don't like Christian music. I think I'm broken. I don't like the way these lyrics sound whenever I try to sing them. And it's simpler than we can even imagine. A lot of these songs are sung in keys that most men can't hit. A lot of these songs have homoerotic lyrics where if you took out the name Jesus or Christ and just put in like Larry or Bob, it's like, oh, (laughs) I'm singing to a dude about how much I love him and want to embrace him in my arms and curl him up in a little ball and stick him in my front pocket, right? And that's, that's the problem that we see with with a lot of this contemporary christian music and so the name of the episode i can't remember what number it was to something it was uh contemporary christian music is for women and effeminate men and the point that i was making is that just because you don't like a certain style of music does not you know elicit a response as to how you've how you've basically chosen with the gospel it, it, it certainly doesn't uh, check those boxes for you it's just a preference thing but the worship leader that you were talking about I do that episode. It's very incendiary. I got a lot of amens. And I got a lot of, wait a minute. But I really like Air One. I really like uh, going to worship uh, sets and, you know, singing these songs. I'm like, okay, great, great. That's fine for you. But this worship leader emailed me almost immediately. And he goes, this is one of the most <coughs> important episodes that I could have listened to for what I do for a living. Because I never once, in preparing the songs we were going to sing on Sunday, took the men into account. I never once thought... Can the men in our congregation hit these notes? Do these lyrics like speak to the masculine spirit? None of that. Hmm. Uh, because a lot of you know worship liter- leaders, because they're more artistic, maybe they ping a little bit more feminine. So they don't hear things the way that kind of like your typical everyday guy hears things yeah. in their kind of normal cadence. And so most guys, maybe they're not emotionally available or really kind of dig into why they feel the way that they do. They just kind of sit there with their hands in their pockets and they think they're going to hell because they hate the music. And so that's the thing that that I kind of wanted to address is like, hey, this this gets into style and whether you like Holy Name or whether you like, you know, I, I don't know, Shane and Shane or Phil Wickham or something like that, that gets down into style. You have to look at the content of what's being yep. saying and whether or not that aligns with scripture or is counter to it. There's more to it than that, but uh, that kind of gives you a general yeah. sense. Thank you, man. That was that was excellent. And um, <clears throat> so true. Um, dude, this, this is another reason why I... I uh, knew I needed to get to know Kyle because when I listened to your show and I was like, dude, he's got August Burns right as the intro. What the heck? Like, that's my favorite band. Like, um, and bro, I can't believe you just dropped Zayo and Extol. Like, you're, that's music to my ears right there. That's literally, well, that's the, those were like, so I had a couple of metalheads uh, that were in, were in youth group with me on Wednesday. So I started going to youth group on Wednesday nights because that's where all the cute girls from my school went. <laughs> so that's where I needed to be. And then, you know, Jesus had other plans. And then I'm like trying to figure out, but I'm like, I'm, I'm a metalhead, right? And I, I mean, I like Metallica and I like all, all these metal bands at the time. And I'm like, okay, so I need to find the Christian versions of these so right. I don't go to hell, right? I can't listen to Slipknot anymore. What's the Christian version of Slipknot? And my buddy sends Demon me Hunter. home. Uh, <laughs> my buddy sends me home with three, uh, with a couple albums. He sends me home with Reborn Empowered by, or Reborn by Living Sacrifice. Yeah, uh-huh. And he sends me home with uh, Zeo, Blood and Fire, Bring Rest. Uh-huh. 
And then like the next thing I borrowed from him was an album by Society's Finest, which I think was on oh my goodness. at the time as well. And so, and then, and then you get into like, you know, for today and Oh sleeper and even modern bands like convictions or cliffside or, uh, uh, other ones I can't really remember, but you have a lot of these songs where lyrical, there's a new a band called reformed brutal, like brutal, uh, metal band. And like, when you look at the lyrical content, you're like, this reads like a worship song sung by a general of an army that's about to storm the gates of hell. <laughs> and I'm like, that just lands better that with resonates. my ginger energy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whereas, like, it's, <laughs> yeah, it just, it, it's a little bit different, but you know, at the same time, but then there are times where like, man, just give me Shane and Shane singing the Psalms right. and I can kind of feel that same way. But you know, I don't need that all the time. Sometimes I need the aggression. Oh, dude, that you're just, you're talking right to me right now. Uh, did you ever go to? I'm getting way off track. I apologize. Did you ever go to Cornerstone Music Festival? Uh, no, I was pretty locked down as a kid, so we we didn't make it up to Cornerstone. Oh, we know what I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely. See, that's how I know you and I are brothers from different mothers. Uh, <clears throat> been there, been there a few times. That's when I I grew up outside of Chicago, so it was only like a about a three hour drive for me. But uh, um, I saw I saw Zayo Extol and Society's Finest there. So. Um, there you go uh anyways uh i'll tell we can talk offline more about that later but uh um okay so <laughs> you gotta be the, there's one easy way to get me off track and start talking about music and then i'll completely derail the conversation um so back to what the point i was trying to make earlier <clears throat> so i think there's the one word that i keep coming back to and zach knows what i'm gonna say because it's just constantly but like um it's in, intentionality or being intentional like, I think that's the key word. Um, and it's, you know, f f for our, our dads um, to be biblically minded as far as masculinity, um, it's about, it, it needs to be holistic, right? Because you mentioned a bunch of things, like, you could be like, well, dude, I, like, work really hard, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which is, that's one, right? That's the the, the provision part, the provider. Um, or they might, you know, you might be like, well, dude, I take jujitsu and I take you know, uh, I lessons with my blade and I go to the gun range. It's like, okay, protector, you got that. Um, um, you know, and while I like to go, you know, hiking and camping or whatever, like you do, like, all right, you do outdoorsy stuff. That's cool. Um, but then when it comes to like the, the, the priest or the, you know, and praying for your family, leading in worship, um, it's not there. It doesn't exist. Right. And so like, there's no, there's, it's like, we could be intentional about the things that we want to be intentional about. We can be intentional mm -hmm. about making sure we get to the gun range, go to jujitsu or whatever, um, going to the gym. Um, but then you're even watching like sports. It's like, <clears throat> I'm guilty of this in the past. It'd be like, well, I got to make sure I don't miss this game, you know, but my family's going to come second to make sure right. I don't miss this game. Um, well, so but yeah, so, so I was going to say like, we are intentional for things that we want to be intentional about. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we're going to teach our men to be biblical men, they need to be holistically intentional about all those things in, and have their primary focus be on those things and then put the other stuff that aren't necessarily bad things, but they need to come second to their to their priority of importance. Yeah, priorities. Go ahead. Yeah. No, in and of themselves, video games, golf, fantasy football, jujitsu are not bad things. They're just <laughs> hobbies. Right. But I have watched men prepare for national jujitsu tournaments to the detriment of their families. I've watched men prepare for their next fantasy football draft to the detriment of their families. Right. I've watched men, you know, prestige in Call of Duty to the detriment of their families. And again, I'm not I'm not after hobbies here. If, if you have a hobby and you want to do it, great. That you have to decompress somehow. But if you can spend hours preparing for if he takes this quarterback in this round and he's no longer available right. and I have to pivot to this and that and you come up with all these different scenarios so that you can get the exact perfect draft so that your lineup and line one of fantasy football is great and yet you can't figure out a gift that, that speaks to your wife's heart, right? Whether she wants your, your time and attention or whether she actually wants a physical gift or whether or not she wants a little bit of time. You, can't, you just can't figure it out. Oh, you can't figure out why your child is struggling in school. You can't figure out why they're not connecting with your friends. You can't figure out why you're having to drag them to church as opposed to them skipping to the to the car with you. You just you're absolutely flummoxed. Mm -hmm. It's like you can figure out difficult things all the time. A golfers, I'm surrounded by golfers. I hate it. I think it's the worst. But I'm surrounded <laughs> by guys that are work. buying that next club. <laughs> 
that's going to help them get the the ball closer to the pin, you know, incrementally maybe if they practice enough. And they will they will watch the YouTube videos and they will they will pay for coaching and they will do all these things. But then it's like, hey, my marriage is on the rocks. Hey, have you tried counseling? Oh, we just don't really have it in the budget. That's weird because once a week you go and play golf, you buy several beers and a sandwich at the turn, and so you're spending well over a hundred bucks a, a week just on your hobby of golf. But you don't have a hundred <coughs> bucks to spend an hour with a Christian counselor that could sure. potentially save your marriage. And so the thing is, is for the most part, it's like I don't believe you. Like you say, oh, I've got all these problems and I just don't know how to fix them. No, I think you know how to fix them, but you you know that it's going to be difficult. So you're going to lean towards the things that are difficult that you've figured out. Yeah. Golf is difficult, but you kind of figured it out, right? You know, uh, getting the perfect shot on an elk that's quartering away at 500 yards while you're in the mountains, you've that's difficult, but you figured it out. You've tuned in your mm. bow, like you've figured out different positions in jiu-jitsu so you can work off a bottom position. You figured all that out. It's all difficult, but you like it and you prefer it. And it's it's good for you, but all the other parts of your area that actually count that you're you're gonna have to give an account to Christ for someday. You just can't really figure it out. Like I'm not gonna have to give an account to Christ someday for the tightness of my rear naked choke, but I will have to about how I've provided for and yeah. you know catechize my family. Yeah. But you know we don't have time for that. Amen. You want to? Yeah, that's good, man. Yeah, I think um, I've been minist- been in ministry for a little bit and uh, have had the privilege of. Um, you know, spending the last minutes with people before they die, a couple dozen people, and, and a lot of the men, I mean, they didn't, I mean, they weren't they weren't talking about their golf game, and they weren't talking about, like, uh, how much money they had or all their extracurricular activities. They were really, a lot of them were depressed because they felt like they weren't the father that they should have been, right? So when all is said and done, we really, as men, evaluate ourselves based upon how well we did uh, when it comes to the most important things. But I think inherently we're just so selfish and we're so self-consumed and a, and a lot of um, our focus just because of the fall, you know, we just want to s- spend time doing stuff that we think is cool, you know. But it, it's hard for men to be intentional in a sense of just looking at our kids and saying, hey, I want you to be great. Like, I want to center my life around making you the best that you can, or not only your kids, but the people around you, because it's a selflessness in that. Um, It just takes a a massive amount of self-discipline to achieve this biblical manhood that we're striving for. So that that was kind of my next question for you. Like, you know, how would you just simply um, maybe consolidate your answer, your answer, or make your answer concise? If somebody were to ask you, hey, what is a biblical man? And what do I need to do daily to, to achieve that? And I know you talked about local church. Maybe maybe talk a little bit, of, if you want to go in that direction, about what we do while we're in the local church to strive to be these men that, that, that don't, it doesn't happen overnight, right? It's a lifelong process. Yeah, I tell guys, uh, a man is a male that cultivates spiritual, mental, and physical resilience daily. So there's a lot packed into that. First, I shouldn't have to say a man is a male. So it's stupid that I even have to say uh, that <laughs> as a precursor to what I'm saying. But spiritual, mental, and physical resilience. So let's break all that down. If you are crushing it spiritually, mentally, and physically, you are, by definition, a biblical man. Because there are a lot of guys that are gym bros, right? They yeah. can deadlift 600 pounds. They can also run under a five-minute mile. They can do all these great things at a CrossFit gym, and that, that's all great. But they haven't read a book since high school, right? Mm. And then you got the prayer warrior dudes, the guys that are just getting after it. And, I mean, they're praying, and they're studying theology, and they're, they're really, really going for it. But if they have to sprint to the end of the neighborhood, like to save their life or someone else's life, they, you know, we'd all be dead, Right. And so when somebody is trying to cultivate spiritual, mental, and physical resilience, what does it take them towards? It takes them back to the good book. It takes them back to the Word of God, because how are you going to figure out how to do that without looking at that as your manual? And the other thing I'll say just briefly is there's a reason why I use the word resilience and not strength, because strength wanes no matter what. Strength wanes over time, Zach. You just talked about how you're with guys in their last moments. They're not strong and virile in those moments, are mm-hmm. they? Right? They're, they're, they're sunken in. They're way less... <laughs> people than they were even months ago that they're literally wasting away and the thing is is even strong men right people that compete in strong men half thor bjornson i think he was the last man to win all three of the top uh the top uh, powerlifting competitions top strongman competitions he won europe's strongest man the arnold classic and world's strongest man all in the same year well the day after the world's strongest man competition he was no longer the strongest man in the world 
Why? Because his body was destroyed from wow. days of incredibly intense com like competition. So there was another man on the planet that didn't have the trophy, but was also the world's strongest man in that moment. But Hathor Bjornsson <laughs> is a tremendous athlete, so give him a couple weeks of stretching, recovery, and ice baths, and he's going to be back, right? Because he's resilient. And so, so many men love to focus on strength. And then when something happens to attack their strength, then they're stuck. They're lost. I, I knew a guy that stopped believing in God because he lost his job. Mm. I was like, really? That the God of the universe, the creator God of everything doesn't exist anymore because you don't no longer work in oil and gas in Oklahoma? Is that it? Is, is that what your faith was dependent on? Right. And so I think for the most part, if you're cultivating spiritual, mental, and physical resilience, it sends you back to the book. It sends you into, you know, the arms of, of men that are going to do life shoulder to shoulder with you that are going to say, hey, follow me as I follow Christ. That's good. Excellent, bro. You keep using that word resilience, and it's my mind is attempting to unpack it because I'm thinking about the foundations that you were laying down about families at Apologia, men— and I know this for myself, like we want to lead our sons, but we can only lead them as far as we've been. Yeah. Like they won't be resilient if we don't teach them how, and we won't teach them how if we're not. So when it comes to resilience, strength, like I guess another way to say it would be toughness, right? Like sure. spiritual, mental, physical toughness. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the ways, because I think it literally implies you're throwing yourself into difficulty and being comfortable with being under a heavy load. Like that's the picture right. that yeah. I get in my mind yep. is you have to be uncomfortable to grow, right? There's that picture there of the muscle building up over time underneath resistance and strength, like it gets stronger. So apply that to the physical, the mental, the spiritual category. Fathers wanting to raise their sons to be resilient. We need to cultivate that in ourselves. How do we do that? What are some ways that we can cultivate physical, mental, spiritual resiliency, toughness? Everyone already knows the answer to this. You have to do hard things. Your kids yeah. have to see you doing hard things. Yeah, right. and so what's hard? Putting a lot of weight on a bar, putting it on the ground, lifting it off the ground, putting it back down and doing that repeatedly. Not, not you know, for reps. I mean, for decades. Your, your kids yeah. need to see you doing that. Hey, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time in the schedule. I've got about 30 minutes to get in the worst workout possible. Let's freaking go. And then they also, your kids need to see you studying the Bible. Yeah. They need to see you struggling with yeah. scripture. They need to see you being like, man, this, oh, when you exposit the Bible, it's kind of hard to skip the stuff you don't like, right? It's a lot easier yeah. to say, hey, I'm going to do a six-week series on how to be a, a better man in modern society and then just backfill it with scripture or do what most megachurch pastors do, which is, hey, let me develop my TED Talk. I'll sprinkle a few Bible verses over the top of it so I can keep my tax exam status, and then we'll just move on to the next series. But the, the ultimate thing is your kids need to see you doing hard things. They need to see you reading books because where are they going to get the idea that men read? Yeah. Because if you just leave it up to the dummies that they're friends with in junior high, the, the cool kids don't read, right? But if it's like, I think my dad's kind of cool. My dad's friends are kind of cool. They're all reading this really difficult book. Like maybe I should dig in, which kind of leads to the next thing. Your kids need to see you defaulting to other men that are in places of authority. They need to see you defaulting to other men that know more than you do Ooh. about a particular subject. <laughs> Every year I do an episode called uh, How to Avoid Being a Crappy Man in, and then I just insert the year. <laughs> One of the things in that episode is always relish the opportunity to look like an idiot, right? Don't pretend like you know something that you don't. So I'm not super handy. I grew up playing sports and doing school. I, I didn't grow up fixing a lot of things, building a lot of things. And so how dumb would it be? If I needed to fix something or build something and I just go out there with my, you know, smattering of tools and just started whacking away while I'm watching a YouTube video or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Or I can say, hey, son, come out here. You're going to help dad with something. Oh, and guess what? A couple of dad's buddies who know how to do this kind of thing, they're going to teach dad how to do this because dad doesn't know how to do it either. Yeah. So I'm going to learn while you're learning. And so like as opposed to feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm the guy that has to have it all figured out or my son's going to think I'm less than. No, you're teaching your son humility. Because guess what? If he's running into an issue spiritually that is crushing him and he needs you know, a spiritual mentor or a spiritual father or a pastor to help him in that moment and you've never shown him or modeled humbling yourself before the authority of another man, you just think he's going to trip and fall into that type of an environment? You just think he's going to decide one day, this is what I need to do? Because to a degree, that's what happened to me. I never saw my dad, ex my dad exercise. I never saw my dad 
uh, read a book. I never saw my dad in church. I never saw him crack the Bible. I never saw him do any of these things that are core level things of what I've done. Now, my dad was a fantastic father and I love him dearly, but he didn't teach me how to be a biblical godly man. Yeah. I had to figure it out on my own. Okay. But the fact that I've sort of figured it out now is to the redounding benefit of my boys, James and Eli. And so that that's the thing. But it's not just me. My boys will see me defaulting to other men and, and you doing hard things and watching you default to other men. That's where you get it. Man, mm -hmm. that's good. And Thank my, you. That's my, good. it's so incredible <laughs> that you're speaking to that because uh, my son um, taught me a couple of days ago. He's uh, how old is he? 14. And um, we went to man camp, and one of the things Bill taught us was, um, hey, you got to get used to people punching in, in the face, you know, as, mm. as you grow in your capabilities of protecting your family. So thankfully, we have incredible men at our church, and they, they have a combat and conditioning class, and we do these monthly sparring. So we just get in and just punch each other in the face. So uh, Monday was the day to go, and I didn't go. And my son's like, when'd you go? I'm like, oh, I'm old. And uh, <laughs> these guys just want to punch me in the face. And he's, he looked at me and said, Dad, it's just your ego. That's why you didn't go. Three-letter word, mm. that's the biggest enemy. And I'm like, you're exactly right. So I, I'm, right. Like, I'm going to go next time. <laughs> you might <laughs> come back with a next time. couple black eyes. <laughs> couple <laughs> but, nose. man, bro, the, woo, when you're hitting the authority issue, like... that's You don't that, think about it like that. That's... Yeah, uh, subjecting yourself to authority. Yeah, I mean, we have we have a number of young men... Uh, at our church that that desire to be Navy SEALs one day. That's their goal. Like they're training now as teenagers. And and like we've we've talked to them like you guys can be the best at swimming, at running. You can be the strongest. You can do the most pull ups, the most sit ups. But if y'all don't learn how to respect authority, you might as well just pack it in now because you ain't gonna yep. make it past day one at boot camp. Um, and so like that's huge, bro. And so like. Um, like you said it though, if the dads aren't modeling that, if the dads have no respect for authority, or if the dads have, I mean, this is that's that's my dad. I love my dad; he's a Christian. But like, I grew up in this house where like there was nobody that could be authority over my dad. And you know, if someone tried to be, then he like removed them from his life. And you know, like that that was a lesson for me and what not to do. <laughs> um, but like, if the dads aren't modeling that, if they can't be subject to to their pastors and elders and under somebody's authority or even at their job um you know a lot of guys that will never um su be successful with work because they can't be an authority to someone else um and so they always are going to have to do their own their own thing and they're always going to struggle um because they refuse to be accountable to other men um that's dude that's such an important important point um and i don't know if you want to add anything to that i, I you already said a bunch about it but um i don't know if there's anything you want to add to that no uh, just just briefly i think when when you're doing that uh i mean zach you mentioned ego e ego is a killer it's an absolute killer because that's what's going to keep you from doing all the hard things that you do and you will come up with ways of telling yourself that it's okay but you need guys in your life that are going to correct you and so i use this common example a lot because it's it's very near and dear to me because when i'm when i'm in a social setting i'm typically center of attention trying to get everyone to laugh and i will take risks to get the laugh right and so imagine a scenario where you're at a d dinner date you and your wife and you know a buddy and their wife and you make an off-color comment and your wife is the punchline okay everyone kind of laughs but your wife kind of gives away that she maybe she didn't really appreciate it, but we're in a social setting, and so she's not going to call you on it right there. What you need is a guy that's not going to stand up and you know bang his glass yeah. and get everyone's attention and correct you. You need the, that guy that as you're walking through the parking lot, he grabs you by your shirt, pulls you in real close and says, hey, you said that joke. It obviously made your wife feel bad. She was the butt of the joke. You certainly need to apologize to her on the way home, and you're never going to do that in front of me ever again, or we're going to have problems. And then you leave it. Right. But if you're driven by your ego, you're going to be like, what are you? Why are you judging me, bro? Like, yeah. you don't know me. You don't know my marriage. That's just how we talk. That's just how I was right. And then you'll just, yeah, yeah. And it's just all ego. It's all little dick energy ego. Just like, oh, I just I'm going to do this in my way, in my direction. And it's like, OK, fine. That's not being under authority of the men in your life yeah. that you purport to believe will be there for you if you need support and yeah. you need help, right? right? And so part of the thing is if you're going to be a 3 a.m. guy, if you're going to be a foxhole guy, like for somebody else, you have to do that in order to expect them to be that for you. Yeah. And so if every time you get just a modicum of correction from a buddy, you reject it with the full force of your ego, 
It's like, good luck, because you're going to be lone wolf someday. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The Proverbs, whoever hates correction is stupid. Right? Yeah. You're being foolish yeah. if you won't be teachable, right. which yeah. is just another way of saying subject yourself to someone wiser right. than you. Well, right. Zach, Zach, you don't have to love it. You don't have to absolutely love it because the times when I've been called out, you know what it makes you feel like? A moron. And no one wants mm. to feel like a moron all the time. But the, the correct reaction is, ah, yeah, yeah, I can't believe I did that. Thank but you. But you're right. I didn't I see apologize. it. Exactly. Thank you so much. That was a blind spot for me. And guess what? It was a it was a voluntary blind spot. Because if I had if I had been more you know centered on the things I needed to be centered on right now, I would have never even done that, much less done it and not immediately apologize. So thank you for correcting me. Uh, please continue looking for opportunities to do the same, and right. I'll keep doing the same for you. And then you move on with your life. It doesn't need to be any more dramatic than that. That's great. That's good. Um, well, I know you only got a few more for a few more minutes with us here. So I'll end on this. Um, I actually was doing a bunch of writing this week about this this subject here, and and um, there's in the Psalms it talks about uh, a, like a, a tree planted by the water, right? And so like you, in the Psalms it talks about a lot about like the mighty oak of Bashan. So you, you picture like this big mighty oak, this tree that's planted bes- by the water, and it's it's not going to be moved. It's not going to be shaken. Um, and the idea is just that <clears throat> that tree is rooted, you know, in Christ. The water is God's word, uh, you know, uh, washing the tree, or feeding the tree, keeping it alive. Um, and that that tree is strong because it's heavily rooted, um, and it can withstand storms. It can withstand, you know, someone trying to shake it. Like it's gonna be like whatever, <laughs> you know, um, you know, it's gonna have scars on it, and those scars just make it stronger and more resilient. Right? There's that word again. Um, and that's, that's, I love that picture. Um, and that's, to me, that's what a biblical man is that someone is rooted in Christ. They're being washed with the word. Um, and they're resilient. Like you said, they can't be shaken. Um, and I was just going to make this point here. Cause I, I know like I get guys that are like, I don't have time to work out. I, I, you know, I can't do CrossFit. I can't do jujitsu, blah, blah, blah. And like, it's like, all right, okay. Th- we're not saying you have to do those things. But the point is, like, you need to take care of your body, right? You need to be around for your family. You need to be able to provide. And if, like, you're just sitting around eating donuts, and I say that because that's my kryptonite. Like, if that's you and, you, and you, you're you not doing anything, you're not even trying, you're not doing push-ups and sit-ups every day, like, what are you doing? Because you're just going to get fat and die, and then your family's without you. And that's the that's the whole point about being resilient and, like, and being intentional is, like, do something, something's better than nothing go walk around the block every day do something to make yourself uh not fat and lazy so that you can well, be around for your family don't cloak your your inability to yeah. make time in your schedule to work out with spiritualism because i've gotten this feedback as full as well before you know kyle i would work out but then i wouldn't be able to spend as much time in the word or in prayer and i'm like well uh you better be the second coming of Billy Graham because what I'm seeing right now is you're about you're deleting about 10 years off the end of your life. So you better get all of that discipleship in now because you're going to be dead someday by something that was preventable because you decided that you didn't want to move your body so much and you just wanted to eat whatever felt good to you in the moment. And so again, we try to like mush it around and make it sound a little bit better, but it's just I, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's foolish. Good. Well, you could do exactly both. Right. You can work out and listen to a podcast. You yeah. can pray. Like you can do worship. Like listen to the Bible. Like yeah, you so know, make the most of that now. time. Like yeah, that's just that, to me. You're right. I'd be like that's just an excuse. <laughs> yeah, just think. I of, think what. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. Just think of, uh, you know, we all started to do what like 15 minutes of Bible in the morning, uh, five minutes of dry fire. 20 minutes of physical exercise if you just did that that's not that much time in comparison to the rest yeah. of the day if you did that every single day you're going to start growing in those areas like incredibly well and over time your capacity for spiritual development gets better so you so you know you find christ or christ finds you whatever your preferred language and then over time you're continually being transformed and turned over and reconcile to God, and you're getting better. You should be getting better at those things, but also you're getting harder. And so, you know, we keep using jujitsu as an example. This year is basically completely destroyed. I can barely get, you know, this in there because it's cauliflower at this point, right? Well, why is it cauliflower? Well, 
your body, what it does is when the skin tissue and everything separates, when you damage the ear, you know, it floods that part of the body with fluid to protect the ear and to protect your brain as a bumper. That's what it's doing because it's like, oh, you're, you just received head trauma. You need more protection for, for your brain helmet, right? And so, but then eventually this will calcify and it'll harden. So the next time you take a similar injury or a similar stimuli, I guess, you don't get it injured, right? Mm -hmm. And so cauliflower ear to a degree is kind of like our Christian walk because things that tripped you up, maybe, I mean, you know, uh, Jeff's done a lot of a uh, man on the street, you know, apologetics type stuff. Maybe the stuff that tripped <coughs> you up when you were first a Christian because you had never reckoned with, oh, well, you know, the, the gospels were just written hundreds of years after Jesus died anyway. It's all fable. Oh, no, you don't even know how to answer that. And then you figure out how to answer it. And then you're hardened. You get a little bit of a callus. You get a little bit of cauliflower. With the abortion issue, I do a talk called Defeating Pro-Abortion Arguments. I take the top 18 pro-abortion arguments and I show you how to ask questions to defeat it. The reason why I do questions as opposed to statements is because you are giving me a pro-abortion slogan to put me on my heels. I'm going to put you on your heels because you have the immoral position. And I can't do that by making my own slogan. I can only do that by asking you a question. But the thing is, is if you haven't dealt with that objection before, with that question before, oh, oh, you're going to freak out and you're going to say something that's hopefully mildly uh, intelligent, but it's probably going to be pretty stupid. But then you're going to be a little bit more calloused over once you figure out how to respond to that. So that's what a man should be. That's what a Christian walk should be as a man is you've got your scars, you've got your bruises, you've got your cauliflower, you've got your calluses, and you're ready to go into battle. And later on in life, when you can't do as many push-ups, when you can't run as fast, when you can't deadlift what you used to be, you have a few more gray hairs. Well, guess what? You're entering into or you are in the middle of your sage stage. And so there are young lions that need you and need your wisdom. And hopefully you are ready for the call. And most of that call is not going to require your body. It's going to require your spirit and your mind. You have to prepare every single day so that that can be your end goal. Amen, Amen, bro. Excellent. Well, <clears throat> I, I know you got to go here. I'll just, I'm going to tell you a funny story real quick and let you go. Uh, we had dinner with Bill uh, Rapier um, the last night he was with us, and he he was like, yeah, I don't, he's like, I really only listen to sermons and Jocko. I was like, oh, do you know Jocko? He's like, yeah, I met him once. And uh, he said, he I think it was in Iraq maybe or something. He he gets there and he you know he meets this guy. Says Willink. He's like, I didn't know who he was, but he's like, I'd heard the name Jocko. And uh, the guys like, introduce himself. Hey, I'm Jocko, and he was like, "Oh, okay." And he's like, "I saw he had the cauliflower ear." That's why I'm telling you the story. He's like, "I saw the cauliflower ear." And he's like, "I had heard stories about him." And he was like, "Hey, my name is Bill. Uh, we need to roll." <laughs> That's how we introduce himself. And Jocko was like, "All right, cool." And he said, "Bill said like two hours later they were rolling, doing some jujitsu." And then like, I was like, "Well, how'd you do?" And he's like, "He he beat me." <laughs> As to be expected. Yeah, it's just a funny story. If you if you guys, I mean, we know we both know, or three of us know Bill personally, and if you can beat Bill in anything at all, then you're exceptional. Yeah. So, um, well, bro, I know you got to go. Um, you got to pick up your kids, I think, right? Yep, that's what I got to do. That's that's how I'm pushing back darkness today. Is Amen. My kids from school. Amen, Amen bro. Amen. So, um, anything you want to leave us with before you have to jet? No, I, I just want to say I'm, I'm so thankful for what you all do with uh, Apologia, Apologia radio, radio, with the church, within abortion now. The thing is, is everyone's got their own flavor for how they should attack these issues. One of the issues is people uh, not accepting the gospel, and the other is, you know, murdering innocent image bearers of Christ yep. while they're still in the womb. And so it's incredibly valuable what you all spend your time, talent, and attention doing. And for people like me, I love seeing more like-minded men like you, uh, you know, storming the gates of hell and pushing back darkness in those areas. So I'm a huge fan of what y'all are doing with Apology, and I just really i am thankful for the opportunity to come speak to your oh, audience. Man. I appreciate that, brother. It means a lot. Um, well, I'll, I'll let you go then. Um, again, on, on daunted, on daunted life, correct? Is that the website? Yep. Yep. Check them it. out. Check out the podcast. It's been, it's great. It's got a lot of really good interviews on there. So, well, thanks bro. I'm glad we got to make this work and, uh, hopefully we can do some more in the future. Sounds good. God bless right, you, man. Go get those Appreciate kids coming on. Thanks, man. All right, man. That was good stuff. That was great. Yeah, excellent. Super I'm helpful. Sorry, I made Zach blush when I said little dick energy. It oh, was just it was, I'm still recording, just so you know. <laughs> oh, Evo. I'm closing. Well, I, no I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't up. know how much we can edit out later, but do, do y'all need me for anything else? Or no, bro. I, no. We'll let you go. Thanks, appreciate man. you, man. Appreciate you, dude. I appreciate y'all very much. All God right. bless you. Later. God bless, bro. See you. We'll just 
codename that LDE or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting my keyboard's not working. Um, yeah, what a fire episode that was. Yeah, it was great. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. Talk I about love that guy. Extremely articulate. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just super helpful and accessible and practical. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, his podcast is great. Um, all right, well, um, one other thing I was going to mention I forgot to. If you're a homeschool dad, or you're a dad of homeschools, or even if you're not homeschooling, if you're a dad and you have kids, well, I guess you have to be homeschooled for this. Um, you want to be uh, take another step in the right direction to being a biblical man. Make sure you sign up with Heritage Defense. You can go to heritagedefense.org. Um, you never know uh, why or when CPS or DCS could be coming to your door, and you want to protect your kids. Make sure you're sacrificing. It's not expensive at all. Make sure you're making a little bit of sacrifice. Maybe, you know, a, a Starbucks or two less each month uh, to make sure your family's protected um, in case something that, like that were to happen. So, again, you can go to heritagedefense.org. Uh, use Apology in the coupon code. And that's where you get the first month free. And uh, you got to do it. It's a, it's a must. Um so speaking of an abortion now, we got a lot going on. Zach, you want to update real quick on stuff going on there? Yeah, we're just working in various states right now. Um, really encouraged by how the church is mobilized across different states. Obviously, if you've followed us and seen, you know, the connections with other believers in different states, <coughs> it seems like the, the church of Jesus Christ is really getting turned on this year and activated yep. and mobilized for action. I think that's what's been missing is not just showing up, but putting their feet on the floor and going and speaking the truth yep. and really getting involved and in taking ownership, I think, which is what we've tried to preach from the very beginning of End Abortion now. You know, if you're in a, in a state and, and these these bills are going in and, you know, these fatherless children are in need of protection, it's got to be you yep. where you are. You have to take this by the horns and... Um, take the truth into conflict with the public square yep. uh, wherever you find yourself so super encouraged um, obviously we're prioritizing different states to work in um, you know uh, the Georgia, Alabama Iowa, we're just in Missouri obviously with that event there too there's just a lot going on and a lot to handle a lot to be faithful yeah. with so uh, pray for us that we can prioritize effectively mobilize equip the church to end abortion yeah we got a possibility of another state this morning so uh if that works out that'll be <clears throat> 22 states um we're almost halfway there which is incredible um so um what's up with you anything you want to talk about there just doing cool stuff just doing st and living just doing stuff <laughs> uh <laughs> um yep that's Day it time uh, well we're gonna do an after show <clears throat> so if you're all access you can stay or head over to apologiastudios.com and we'll talk in about 20 minutes or so um and uh, we super appreciate everyone and your your partnership with us and your support and both with abortion now and apologia studios um you know just just partnering with us is is fantastic we can't do anything we do without you guys and um and we always say, but it keeps the lights on. It allows the gospel to go forth across the world. It allows babies to be saved. Um, and, you know, different nations now. We're not just here in, in the U.S. And uh, so it's it may seem like nothing, but like I said, another uh, one less cup of Starbucks or two a month uh, can go a long way in saving babies and leading, leading souls to Christ. So um, <clears throat> with that. I'll end on that. Uh, we will be back next week. I don't, I, Pastor Jeff should be back. I mean, I know he'll be back. We, he should be back on Zone of Men. Um, and uh, we'll see you in the after show. Zach and Zach, thank Later. you. Later. See you guys. Peace out.